Hey everyone and welcome to my studio. It's time for another demo and today I am going to compare a painting done on sanded paper versus a painting done on unsanded paper. Now I know m many of us all love to hate on Canson, Miton, unsanded pastel paper. Um, it's, it's, it, once you kind of experience sanded paper, it's like you don't want to go back because it's a struggle. It can be a struggle. But hopefully today I'm going to prove that with a few tips, you can be successful with unsanded paper. In fact, I enjoy painting on unsanded paper for a change of pace. Um, it's just something about the nice soft feeling of it. But there are some tips, and I'm going to share that in today's video, that will help you have more success. Now before I start, I, I, I want to warn you, at about the 10 minute mark, into the demo, it's going to not look like anything's happening. Um, I, I know from watching the stats that people drop off after about 10 minutes, and I know that's usually when the painting is at its worst. So I urge you to stick with me this time uh, and see it progress. I can't promise it's going to be a, a, a great painting, because this is a, a demo, but I can promise you it will improve after 10 minutes, so stick with me. All right, so let's come on over to my work uh, working board, and I want to first show you the painting that I did on sanded paper. Now this paper is um, Ming Art sanded paper that I picked up this paper at the IAPS convention of the last time around, and I really like this paper. Uh, but what I want to do is reproduce the same painting, more or less, on a piece of unsanded Canson paper. And I'll, we'll, we'll make a comparison of that um, at the end of the demo. So here I've selected a orange, kind of light orange tone uh, piece of Canson 9 by 12 and I'm using the smooth side. So you'll note on Canson there's the bumpy side with texture, which is probably hard to see in the video, and then there's the smoother side, which is considered actually the wrong side of the paper. But it is smoother and then you don't have to fight with that bumpy texture, um, which to me is too mechanical. It's I, I like texture, but I like it to be a little bit less uh, evenly spaced, if that makes sense. I've attached my paper to a piece of foam core board with uh, what artist tape, and I just simply make hinges so you can see how easy it is to remove. You can see the, the hinges. All right, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use a piece of um, vine charcoal to lightly draw in my um, main shapes. Now, basically I use, uh, any tool available to me to do the initial drawing, whether it be a pencil or a pastel pencil, and I just happened to ha uh, have this piece of vine charcoal handy, so I decided to use it for no other reason than it was there. Uh, but I'm drawing lightly with it because, you know, I, I don't want to have some big dark lines that I have to cover up. So what I've done is I've put in a few of the tree trunks and a few of the big shapes of the yellow foliage. So we're painting some autumn trees here and we're going to work with yellow, which can be challenging. I, I find it to be a challenging color to work with with pastel. Alright, so I put, blocked in the distant tree line and now we have a um, a pathway that's, that's leading us into the distance. Uh, so I'm going to just hint at it. I'm not, um, sometimes when I have roads or pathways, I decide to leave them out. Sometimes I'll leave them in. We'll see how it goes. I always like to take liberties with my reference photo. I'm not, I'm not married to it. Uh, I don't mind taking out my artistic license and making changes. All right, so now that that's done, we're going to block in the painting. And I'm going to use some hard pastels. I don't know if we can get a look at the pastels I'm going to be using. These are some new pastel brand, hard pastels. And then I will advance to the softer pastels, which are mostly Terry Ludwig pastels. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to block in with hard pastels because they have less amount of binder, so they will fill the tooth of the paper. Um, uh, they will not fill the tooth of the paper as quickly. 
So I'm going to begin by blocking in those tree trunks and the shadow under the tree. And I'm going to... And you might be thinking, wait a minute, those trees are yellow. Why are you blocking them in with blue? I And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to start darker with the trees and then gradually get them lighter and brighter. I'm also going to be dark giving oops, the foreground so that we have a nice dark mysterious foreground to uh, enter into. So these are all the dark areas. The next thing I'm going to do is block in the light area. And the light area happens to be the sky. Oh, I've got butterfingers today. I'm using a pale yellow. This uh, particular day was overcast. Um, kind of a moody day. I might leave it overcast or I, I might turn it into a blue sky day. I have that option, but I'm going to block it in with light. Because after all, it is the lightest value. There are um, also the pathway, if I decide to put it in, is a little bit light. So we'll just put a little bit of light down there. Then I have the darkest shapes, the lightest shapes. I'm going to block in now the most intense color. This is what I'm doing for this block in is I call this a, a simple road map of color and value that I can then follow. It's kind of like um, creating a foundation, a framework so you know, so I have some a road map to follow so I don't get lost. The most intense color is the yellow in the trees. Uh, so I'll just block that in just to remind me that it's yellow, that they're going to be yellow. Then what I'm left with is all these other areas. And so I have to uh, put in the distant trees. Um, and I think what I'm going to use is some purple. And remember, this is the underpainting. This is the blocking. This is the first layer. We're going to make some changes, but we have to start somewhere. And what is left is the grassy area. I'm going to use a red violet to block in the grass. I'm going to throw a little bit of that red violet up into the trees. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of pipe insulation uh, foam that I've uh, cut into pieces, and I'm going to rub in this first layer. If this isn't necessary really to do this on a toned piece of paper because um, having that little bits and pieces of orange peek through actually unifies the painting. It's kind of like having a thread woven through a blanket, kind of ties it all together. Uh, if I were working on light piece of paper, like white or UART, which is this really light tone, it's really very helpful to cover up all the light bits. But I'm going to just do it now because I want to put the whole painting into uh, out of focus. Uh, so it's ugly right now. What, how many minutes have we gone? Eight. Eight minutes. See, it's ugly. Usually right on schedule at the at the ten minute mark. But what, what we have to do now is take this ugly road map and hopefully turn it into something a little bit more interesting and exciting. So the first thing I'm going to do with these harder pastels is I'm going to uh, use, or softer, let me correct myself, I'm going to use the softer pastels to reinforce those dark areas. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, most of my soft pastels that I use are from Terry Ludwig. Um, I'm going to just block in these dark uh, branches because these kind of provide the structure for the tree. They will get covered up for the most part, but I like to put them in early. And by the way, I'm using a dark blue, like a navy blue at this stage. The tree trunks are, are pretty dark. Naturally they are. And I'm reinforcing all those dark areas that I started with. Then the next thing I'm going to do is add another layer of dark. This is a dark uh, burgundy. 
Why am I doing this? Because I want my dark areas to be interesting. All right, now let's talk about using Canson paper. This is the unsanded paper. When, it, when you're working on unsanded paper, you do not have um, as much tooth as the uh, sanded paper. So in other words, it doesn't grab on as many layers of pastel. So what does that mean? Well, we, we for one thing, start with the... Um, Excuse me, start with the softer, harder pastels. That gives us a little bit more room to play. But the other thing that I'm doing is I'm using a fairly light touch. How do I know it's a light touch? Because I can still see the paper color and I can still see the layers underneath. Right here, if you can see this, you cannot see the paper or the colors. It's heavy. It's a little bit too heavy, so I could have problems in this area. I want you to remember, have a light touch. The right touch is a light touch. And it's always a good idea to practice your touch. Um, all right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gradually build the layers to get to the bright yellow tree. So I'm going to start with this darker, um, kind of mauvey, grayed down, brick color. I guess that's how I'm going to describe it. Because I also mentioned that yellow was a kind of a tricky color to work with. It's hard to get it really bright and vibrant. So I start darker and duller and I gradually turn up the volume and get it lighter and brighter. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'll leave it at this stage and I'm going to start to work on the, the background, what's behind it, the sky and those distant trees, and so those distant trees, there's some green trees back there, some evergreen. So I'm going to use a gray down green because I want to push these trees back in the distance. Remember, or I'm trying to remind myself, the right touch is a light touch. Um, they could be a little bit lighter, so I'll go with a, a lighter version of that gray down green. I don't mind at this stage that I can still see the paper peeking through, uh, because as I mentioned earlier, that's like the thread that holds everything together. I don't really mind that. So now we have the distant trees. Okay, let's work on the color for the sky. Remember, it was an overcast day. And I'm, I wanted to decide if I want to keep it overcast. Um, it's not overcast in my uh, sanded version, though. Hmm. I think for a change of pace, we'll make this one overcast. It doesn't really matter as a comparison whether I use blue or whether I use um, pale violet, which is what I'm using now as a means to compare the types of paper. Um, I work pretty much the same way on sanded paper as I do on the unsanded paper. I work, even on sanded paper, I work to have a light touch. It just gives me more flexibility. Um, but right now you can see that I've gotten several layers in here and I have not filled the tooth yet. I still have room to go. I'm using this pale violet uh, as a carving tool as you can see to, to uh, start to break up the trees because on some areas of the trees it's a little bit sparse. They've started to lose their leaves. And one thing about sky holes is it's never, for me anyways, it's never a one-time deal. I'll have to go in put in some sky holes. I tap them often with my finger, like so, so I, bl I blur them a little bit. Because otherwise then they stand out too much and they look like uh, Christmas ornaments or decorations on the tree. Now I don't want just one color up in the sky. So that was a pale violet. Now I'm going to put in a very pale blue, kind of a duller blue, just to give it a little bit more color. And as we approach the horizon, I'm going to use 
a pale yellow, kind of like the original uh, new pastel underpainting. That gives us kind of a, a brightening effect, you know, that high overcast where you get that bright feeling. You may hear, uh, let me be quiet for a minute. You hear the scratchiness? That's because this happens to be a Diane Townsend soft form pastel. I, I love these pastels and I find that they are wonderful on unsanded paper. And the reason why is they have a little bit of pumice in their makeup so they tend to uh, rough up the paper, if you will, as you paint. So they work really well on... So that's another tip. <clears throat> the type of pastels you use are helpful. So those Diane Townsend pastels, if you have them, soft form, uh, thank you, are really wonderful on unsanded paper. So now I'm going to take some uh, Blair Very Low Odor Workable Fixative. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray, lightly spray the trees and the foreground. This is another uh, help for me to help me create more layers on unsanded paper. So using workable fixative uh, in between layers will help you um, have uh, more success, more opportunities for layers. So I have to let that dry just a little bit and while I'm letting that dry I'm just adding a little bit more color to my distant tree line. Here's a really nice um, dull green. And the other thing that I do need to do is break up that distant tree line a little bit more. So I'll take that yellow that I had in the sky and pull it down and, and take my finger and soften the edges so that that area gets pushed back into the distance. All right, now let's work on the trees a little bit more because they're still pretty ugly. So we have to gradually turn on the lights. So what I'm going to do is start with a dull orange. I'm not painting leaves at this stage. I'm painting big shapes of foliage. So I'm looking at my reference photo just as a, a guide. I feel like I need to have another tree over here because as I'm looking, it just feels like I have two trees almost equal. Oh, and equal is boring, so let's add another guy over here. Ooh, that was a dirty pastel. But this pastel's so dirty that I thought it was yellow and it's green. It has good advice. Uh, keep your pastels clean, and then you know what colors you have. So I'm just balancing the composition out a little bit by adding a tree. It was uh, Degas who said, even in front of nature, one must compose. And so that is also true, even when you're interpreting a photo, you can make changes. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Alright, so we added one layer of orange. Now let's go with a, a little bit brighter yellow orange. And we don't really have to worry about the direction of the sun here because it's overcast. So everything pretty much has even amount of, of light. I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow down in here, carry it down. So we're getting there. I want to work a little bit on this foreground area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and very lightly blend in this area just to soften it a little bit. And now what I'm going to do, it's in my reference photo, it was actually grass. Uh, so we'll keep it grass, but I'm going to start with that light dull green in the distance, like there's a distant field and sneak it back behind the trees. And that's kind of uh, helpful to give more layers, which helps create a better feeling of depth. It's uh, shadows under the trees, so I'm going to add a dark green for the shadow. And moving forward, I'm 
actually um, work in some golden grasses just because in the fall you wouldn't have really a bright green lawn at this stage in, uh, in our autumn. But in the foreground area, I'm going to darken it once again. Oh, this is another Diane Townsend. You can hear the difference. And I can, this is hard for me uh, in a video to explain, but I can actually feel the difference. I'm going to block in the little pathway. The pathway has to also change as it goes into uh, the distance. It's going to get a little bit lighter and duller. Let's see if I have the right color for it. I'm going to kind of squiggle it around. I don't, I don't like that. It's really easy to make corrections with pastel. Um, simply just a simple brush out or knock it back with your finger. There, that's a little bit better. Alright, now another quick spray with workable fixative. Can you tell how it darkens? As soon as I spray, everything gets dark and dull. Which is why I don't like to use fixative for the most part on a finished painting. There are some fixatives that, that um, will not darken the, the painting uh, as much. Um, but I don't use those for this technique because I actually want that darkening effect. The other thing that it does that really that I really like is it helps the pastel skip over those darker fixed areas and creates a very very um, subtle feeling of texture. It's subtle. Right now I'm using a dull kind of army green, yellow green. Um, that is not what these trees are. They're not yellow green. But I do see hints of it. So I'm putting it in. And now I'm going for the gold. This is a really nice golden yellowy ochre. So what I'm doing is I'm gradually turning on the lights. And you can see um, how the pastel is skipping over those dark passages. If you are on a member of my Patreon page, I'll be posting this demo with expanded commentary and uh, better close-up photos so you'll be able to see uh, some of the things that I'm talking about in closer detail. So if you haven't joined and you were thinking about joining, it's just $4 a month uh, and there are new videos every week over on Patreon and they'll, I'll put a link in the description but it's simply patreon.com slash Karen Margolis and we'd love to have you but there's a lot more of content than I can put here on YouTube. Alright so we are almost there. I'm going to increase the light on the trees once more so this is a little bit of a lighter value of that gold color. Notice also I have not painted any leaf shapes yet. It's all using the side of my pastel, big areas. This guy over here. Um, I'll put a little bit of light down on the ground. And it's going to come across the path, so let's light up the path a little bit. And I'll light it down here. All right, so we're talking about comparing the Canson with with the sanded paper. So far, I haven't had any issues as far as <coughs> feeling as though I've filled the tooth of the paper. Uh, using the workable fixative has certainly helped me gain more layers. Uh, definitely highly recommend that. Um, the Diane Townsend pastels have been helpful. 
It was also helpful to block in with a harder pastel uh, stick rather than going immediately for the softest. Um, so all, all of those things have helped so far in uh, helping me get layers on the unsanded paper. So I'm going to give it another spray. You know, I want to stress that typically I would spray it outside and not in, in the studio, but for the sake of um, doing a video, I'll do it inside. But I can tell you, because I have reviewed several workable fixatives, this low odor is truly low odor. Um, do, it's, not, it's not really... Um, I, I hardly notice it. But do recommend that you spray outside. I'm adding a little bit more light to that distant field and kind of sneaking it behind some of the tree trunks. I'm getting to the point now where I have to finish up and do the, the final touches. So before I address the trees, I'm going to add a little bit of light on, on the trunks because I've been uh, working with a very dark uh, value, but it, they, they do have a little bit of... Um, light on them. So I'm using a dull kind of uh, mauve gray, I guess you could say. You guess you could call it that. So that gives them a little bit of variety. Alright, here we go. Let's turn on the lights for these trees. So I'm going with a much brighter warm yellow. And now, because I have so, several layers of the workable fixative, I think you can really see the effect of the workable fixative uh, on the paper and how I'm getting that textured feeling. It takes several layers to get that going. Um, I will say that I'm noticing that because this is unsanded paper and I'm, I've got the paper pretty saturated with fixative, it's starting to buckle slightly right here, but my experience tells me that uh, that's temporary and it will flatten out as it dries and if it doesn't for some reason simply putting it under some heavy books will just, will do the trick. Alright, I don't want to get too uh, spotty in these areas so I'm going to just pull them all together with a darker gold uh, and now what I'm going to do is add those finishing touches. So one of the things that I want to do is I want to kind of push this area back a little bit more. So I'm going to soften it with my finger. I don't usually use my finger for a lot of uh, for a lot of paintings, but uh, when you're working on the unsanded surface, it doesn't really hurt your fingers. So sometimes it, it gives you the effect you need to go in there and smudge it. Um, all right, I want to paint a few different leaf shapes, so I'm going to come in and just push a little bit uh, harder into the... Let me just tighten this. Okay. The idea is if I put in a few leaf shapes, the viewer's eye will fill in the rest, so we don't have to paint every leaf just really where you want the viewer's eye to go. So I'll just put a few here and there hopefully pulling the eye around the painting. Um, just don't need to go crazy with them. I have gone crazy with little leaf dots. Um, so I know what I'm talking about. Put in a few and step back and ask yourself, well, is that enough? Uh, if not, put in a few more, step back and then ask yourself if it's enough. Don't just stand here and keep making leaves or you'll have too many. Now I want to put in just a few down on the ground because they would have fallen down and they act like little stepping stones pulling us into the painting. Again, you could get carried away with those as well. The last thing I'm going to do... Oh, okay. Uh, let me just have a look at this and I'll be right back. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out those hard pastels again and I'm going to come in and create, a, <clears throat> excuse me, a few linear grass marks just to show a little bit more texture in the grass. This is another area where we can get carried away. So a little bit, a few marks, 
step back, make a few marks, step back, and then finally I'm going to come in and give some spice marks in the tree trunks, some nice violet marks. Violet being the complement of yellow, so they play nicely together, which is why I tried to use a lot of the violets. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to pull out the unsanded version with the blue sky. And isn't that funny how with the blue sky we have a totally different mood uh, and feeling? Um, but basically, the effect is the same. I feel like I get a little softer feeling and look from the unsanded paper, which is why I like to work with it uh, every once in a while. You can do it. It's unsanded paper. Take it out today. Play with it. Uh, workable fixative. Think about the pastels you're going to use and have fun with it. So I hope you've enjoyed that demo. Uh, I'll be back in a few weeks or less, hopefully less, with another one or join me over on Patreon and we have videos every week. So thanks for tuning in.